a very warm welcome to everyone yet another time yet another session another action packed session like we always mention so monster recruit as you all know is an initiative uh, uh you know taken by monster.com and i'm i'm sure that uh, you know people are joining in from all the locations i i really welcome all of you uh from india gulf and southeast asia and as you all know that monster recruit is an initiative by monster.com to connect leaders uh in the hr and recruiting space with aspirational ta professionals through a series of live webinar sessions the idea is to share the learnings trends and best practices to empower and enable them to keep up with the fast changing hr and recruiting landscape well before we start off the session well uh, the topic for today would be effective sourcing strategies to meet your hiring targets fast i know that's a interesting topic well finding the right talent and finding it fast is the top priority for any organization today so what employers can do to meet their hiring targets faster well what top candidate sourcing strategies they can follow how can they develop talent pipeline i know that these are interesting questions and i'm sure that all of this definitely crossed your mind at least once well to talk about this amazing topic well we have uh let me you know go ahead and introduce Mr Ashish Jain AVP Sourcing Quest Corporation an alumnus of IIM Indore Ashish Jain is an industry veteran with over 15 years of experience having worked at organizations with recruiting at their core Ashish is ingrained in various aspects of HR and talent acquisition he is an experienced business head with a demonstrated history of working in the human resources industry skilled in permanent placement budgeting as well technical recruiting in hr policies too well i'd like to also mention that he's also skilled in permanent placement uh, he's also uh, demonstrated in history in mentioning in the human resources industry budgeting technical recruiting hr policies staffing bulk hiring and internet recruiting as well ashish is a formidable hr talent acquisition professional welcome to recruit ashish uh, over to you it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us sir thank, thank you, you for being with us thank you noel absolutely welcome yeah thank you noel for such a wonderful introduction <laughs> so i think uh, dear friends and colleagues welcome you all in this session so uh to uh so participants to start with can we uh, know from which all locations uh, uh you are like uh i belong to uh mumbai india so i just wanted to know uh which all are your locations so that i can quickly understand well well there are a lot of responses pumping in come in so it's completely in. pan yes. india a lot of responses yeah, yeah. so we have people from bangalore ahmedabad pune indore singapore mysore bahrain wow that's a lot of versatility across locations philippines malaysia good hyderabad yeah it's bahrain okay okay coimbatore yeah okay tondo really good to know south africa raipur hmm. good responses so we have versatile people here from overall all locations and i am looking forward uh to learning from you as well so that's good thing uh i just wanted to run a quick poll to understand you all better if you could let us know which all industries you know you are from i just just complete this this will only take hardly 1 minute to answer yeah okay 
Well, I'd recommend all the participants to please, you know, partake in the poll because it'll give us a broader perspective in terms of what you guys think and will also make things easier for us. I truly appreciate all of you taking the poll. And I, I still feel that there are a couple of people more uh, who are yet to take that. So I'll, we'll keep the poll live for the next 10 seconds and then mm -hmm. probably uh, call it off. So almost 110, out of 146, 114. So still a few more people, if they can also take up the poll. <clears throat> Well, I guess we can, uh, you know, call the poll off. Uh, yeah. There and then we can probably. So move. I guess very good, sizable number of uh, people from IT, ITS, then banking, manufacturing, education. Quite a lot of people are there from all industries. So that's good one. Uh, just share the results also to visible. So good. Good to know all. So let's begin the session. So, you know, all of us belong to HR fraternity and we always have, you know, challenge related to hiring and that too also in time. So, well, uh, there is no ready-made solution for that. I have to admit that, but you know, I'll, uh, in today's session, uh, I would touch upon a few important points and hope you will get the directions from that. So good, let's begin. So recruiting for nurses and doctors, that's also a very good. So I'll share my screen. I'll share my PPT with you all guys to run this basically okay yeah is my screen visible to noel uh yeah. yes sir uh we are able to see your screen uh it'll be uh yeah i guess it's on the normal mode uh maybe mm -hmm. the presenter mode just skip so if you could just uh retweet that that'll be amazing yeah yeah i'll do that sure thank you Sorry, guys. Ah, ah, okay. So today's topic is effective sourcing strategies to meet your hiring targets faster. So, well, what actually is sourcing? So as we all know, it's very simple. It's the process of searching for and reaching out to potential candidates for your hiring needs. But here it is uh, a very important uh, word I would like to add on here. It is that it is the process of active searching, right? So there is a talent pool available. We will discuss in detail on about that as well. So it is important that we should do the active searching. That is very important. And why it is important? Because as per the survey, only 36% of workforce is actively looking for the opportunity. Uh, when I say workforce actively looking for opportunity, which means actually they are applying on their own. But at the same time, when we approach from our side proactively to the audience, to the target audience, you will see that almost that is 90% of them are ready to listen to you and ready to respond. To you. So it is very important that we should take up the active search when we start the sourcing. Obviously, when we are talking about the active sourcing, recruitment marketing is very, very important. And also research has also proven that sourcing candidates, which we source actively are more than two times as efficient as candidates who apply when we post the jobs. So this is important point. 
I'll take up that piece. So now how do we source? The sourcing starts from creating a talent pool and from talent pool to build a talent pipeline. Now how both are different. So talent pool is whatever the database available with you or whatever database you are getting from your job posting, from your uh, referrals, from your other channels. But that actually is not weighted. So that will count under talent pool. Whereas the talent pipeline is the weighted. It includes the candidates who are vetted and have the qualities you need to be considered for a position immediately. So converting talent pool to talent pipeline is a very critical factor when you are doing the effective hiring. Now, why talent pipeline is important? Talent pipeline is important because hiring a right candidate means lower employee turnover and great productivity. Whereas if we hire the wrong candidate, anyone we pick up without source, without screening, that means harming your company culture and wasting the resources. So how to engage with the candidates is very critical at the initial stage of hiring itself. And it is very imperative, obviously, to develop a full strategy that targets the right candidates. So we need to make a talent pipeline framework, which will have few important points. So first important point about that is identify your company's long-term goals and needs. So when I say company's long-term goals and needs, you need to know what expansion or what growth company is planning in next one year, next two years, or even beyond that, up to five years. Or maybe your company is planning expansion number-wise or the increase in the locations, or even maybe the change in locations also. Here, one interesting story, I, I, uh, interesting case I would like to share is about uh, one of the uh, the largest bank who was having their call center in a very centralized place in a big metro city. And since it was placed in centralized place, their lease was over and suddenly they were looking for the new offices. And new office, when they had calculated, they have to go, you know, almost in this suburban area. So that means almost 30 kilometers from that particular area. HR has never, you know, faced the challenge related to recruitment when they were placed centrally. But when it comes to the change of the location and that also to suburban area, it was uh, really a disaster to them. Business also doesn't thought of it in advance, well in advance, that most of the employees who are happy to work since it is centrally located, now going to suburb, almost 70% of the employees left the job. This, this became a disaster to them and almost uh, it, it took them to six, almost six months to streamline again the entire business. And if it is a sales process, you can imagine the loss of revenue. So it's very important that HR is always aligned. In fact, the talent acquisition should always aware of the long-term goals and needs of the company. Then coming to candidate sourcing strategy to fill your you know, pipeline, which we will be discussing in detail. But yeah, few pointers are there, like the career page on your company website, which is very important because it is manageable. It's under your control. It saves your time and you can do entire application process at the same platform. Similarly, positioning your company online, that is also comes under the candidate sourcing strategy because, you know, Positioning company, employer branding is very important when you are talking to the candidate. Similarly, 
the other few pointers are like email marketing which also we will discussing online job boards which is also the critical part of the sourcing strategy and employee referrals so encouraging your employees to share job opening links on their social media kind of so as well coming to that so at the same time there are three things which you need to put in the talent pipeline framework as well always connecting with the new candidates to the sourcing channels your outside sourcing channels at the same time also assess your talent pool and nurture the candidates in your talent pipeline so they needs to be engaged once they are part of your talent pipeline that is very important yeah going forward yeah what is weighted means so weighted is means that aligning the candidate as per uh, the job requirement that is called the you can say in simple terms uh, filtering filtering from the available database yeah so now going to the top candidate sourcing strategies so very first important right from the beginning of the hiring stay in lock lock step with the hiring manager during the candidate sourcing process that means align with your hiring manager early and ensure that you are on the same page related to the requirement so you need to be engaged with him you understand the uh, specific keywords to search for example uh, you know a uh, very general position is there when we hire it's with almost all uh, companies here that is key key account manager when we speak about key account manager so key account manager when uh, if you go with a keyword of account it happens uh, so you will get the profiles related to you know the accountants lot of accountants will come up so it is very important that specific keywords uh, you should have before uh, beginning the search also i would advise you might run some sample cvs with them to start up with now going to back to sourcing candidate from your ats you might be having your ats with you and sure sure i'll also elaborate that piece so when you sourcing candidate from your ats that will be the uh, you know basically what we had spoken earlier that is related to talent pool so from that you can get the candidates you might have already interviewed those candidates you need to re engage with the those candidates to help to build a talent pool to talent pipeline uh, you might have rejected that candidate in the future but nowadays uh, people are learning very fast and due to lack of some uh, let's say for it requirement due to lack of some it skills you have rejected it earlier but now might in the uh, period of 3 to 6 months he might have gained uh, the experience as well as that skill also so re engaging is always beneficial now again coming to you diversify our online candidate sourcing channels so it's not uh, to stick with only you know one portal or one uh, social platform you need to diversify as per your industry there are lot of you know nowadays specific uh, sourcing platforms whether it is related to it whether it is related to pharma whether it is related to media so coming to yeah that question include offline recruitment methods so offline recruitment are still a powerful source going offline and meeting people face to face at events 
is a great way to source new candidates. Your industry, whatever might be your industry, there may be uh, forums happening for that particular industry, events happening in that industry. Go and meet the people face to face. It is a great way to source new candidates. As the survey also implements, and even our personal experience also in, uh, give us that the same result as candidates are more likely to respond when you have a personal touch. So don't avoid offline recruitment methods. Uh, that Noel will answer if we need to have, uh, can we share the recording session? Yeah. Uh, we'll take that uh, forward, sir. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. And sure. sir, any particular case study that you'd like to share, you know, probably that you've come across uh, in your experience, which was very difficult to handle, uh, that will help our participants as well? Yeah. So, a lot of startup companies are there, right? And when startup companies, you never know what uh, ideology clicks and suddenly they expand. And when you, when you expand, it becomes a volumetric hiring. Volumetric hiring, suddenly uh, a company with having, you know, 15 to 20 manpower, this are looking for people in 1500 to 2000, 2000 people in, in a given short time. Suddenly they got the funds, their idea is expect, uh, accepted in the market and they are growing very fast. Now, when it comes to volumetric hiring with the limited HR staff, HR staff, the cost remains same. How you are going to interview or uh, screening or filtering the candidates in a single day, one recruiter, how we can do 100 hirings per day? That's a big challenge, you know? But when we talk about that challenge, certainly, and that too also in multiple locations, not in a same locations. So both ways, it is a challenge. If you have to recruit 100 people, uh, you can back calculate how many people are you going to source, going to interview and doing at the same time. So there the technology helps a lot. And when I was talking about your career web page, your online digital things. So that really helps a lot. And even a single recruiter can do in multiple ways. So that's one of the interesting challenge, which people are, you know, sharing the things. Secondly, Noel, I would like to tell about the gender diversity hiring. People nowadays facing a real challenge related to gender diversity. But, you know, it's a long term thing. It can't happen in a single day. And gender diversity also not at the uh, freshers level. They want gender diversity in their managerial levels, in the top levels, in the CXO levels. So there you need to pitch in a better company branding, employer branding comes in the place, your, how your website looks, how you know your employees are telling these stories about the gender diversity in your company. That becomes really exciting. Are they talking on social platforms on that? That will attract more talent. So recruitment is all about sales, all about the pitch, how you make. So that is very important. I hope, Noel, Noel it answers you. Uh, well, thank you so much. I guess that case study was very uh, detailedly explained. Uh, truly, truly appreciate that. Yeah. So going to, uh, coming back to again, uh, utilize your employees networks for sourcing candidates. <clears throat> so your, uh, believe me, your talent pool may increase up to 10 X recruiting through the employees networks. Your employees can help you reach untapped talent and improve response rates from candidates they know. Sorry. <clears throat> In fact, when you are uh, 
talking about the uh, sourcing piece, even that candidates doesn't fit for your roles, <clears throat> still you discuss about the, you know, the futuristic roles so that you can engage and can keep that particular candidate interested. It's not about the rejection. It's about giving them the feeling that in future, you might be accepted. This role may not have fit for you. Again, perfect your outreach messages for sourcing candidates. These are the simple tip. One of, uh, you know, <coughs> mail is, is still not out from the <coughs> from the entire piece. So mails are uh, still very important source of communication. There are few thumb rules about when you are sharing the mails <coughs> with the candidates. One is related to subject line. Personalize the message a brief about the role and your organization and explain how you think about that particular role for which you want that particular candidate. <laughs> so also, as you're explaining, uh, there's also been a request to explain the fourth pointer, I guess it's include offline recruitment methods. So there's been a request to, uh, you know, be re-explained. So if you could just, uh, I understand, sir. Would you like to grab a glass of water, maybe? And then, <coughs> Sorry, we can start up. No problem. That's all right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, again, I would go to offline recruitment methods. So, offline recruitment methods is basically touch basing the candidates on a personal basis and how you are going to do. So basically, uh, whatever company in whichever field your company, be it IT, be it pharma, or be any other industry, there are forums happening across, you know, uh, across the uh, boards, and there are events happening related to that particular uh, vertical, particular field. Uh, there are industry industry expo ha happening, exhibitions happening. <coughs> so there you need to go personally and meet candidates face to face. And why uh, I have included this particular offline recruitment methods because candidates are more likely to respond when you have a personal touch. Hope I am able to clarify that piece. Uh, sir, I, I guess we can move on. I'm sure that you know you did a brilliant job in explaining that as well. Uh, but then, if there are any questions, we can take uh, you know that up later. I yeah, mean, yeah, they can be put in the chat box. So, guys, if you have any <laughs> questions, I'm sure that you'd be uh, putting it in the chat box, and we can take that in the Q and A session. Mm. We can move on, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, build a strong employer brand. Now, as an HR, how you are going to marketing team is doing their own activity, uh, building the employer branding, sales team also doing that, customer care team is also doing that. But how as an HR we can do, we can always respond to uh, first and foremost thing is the reviews. Reviews which we which are coming online uh, on different review books always always respond to reviews. That will make you a, a company life. That is very important. Tell your story. Second important point to build the employer branding. Always tell your employees to share the stories, to tell their stories about their experience working with that particular company. So when you sh when your employees are going to share, it gives an impact and uh, direct or indirect way, it, ha it helps you to build the employer planting. There can be, uh, you can create a company blog also as well, where, you know, uh, people can share their thoughts, 
videos, what not. Participate in conferences and always partner with your marketing team when it comes to the hiring piece. So, and most importantly, uh, again, follow up with candidates who don't respond. That is also important because when you uh, communicate uh, with a lot of people, few of the people don't respond. That may be due to the time gaps. Maybe they are not interested in that particular job which you are offering. Maybe they are not interested in your own company. But still be in touch with them. Share your company newsletters, whatever. Be engaged with them. It's not that they have not responded today. They might not be you know, responding again in future. So they may respond. So that's the total job of a recruiter being engaged with the candidates. Always, you know, make your, uh, your talent pipeline live and active with a lot of activities happening with your candidates. Further, uh, in today's world, obviously everyone is saying the digitization so your HR should also be digitized. Use the right tool related to the hiring, whether it is inbuilt, whether you are taking from outside. So these all things are there. Uh, you know, the best candidates are in such high demand that it's necessary to be more strategic. If you want to win them with your competitors for top tier talent, I hope these candidates sourcing strategies would have helped you to fill your pipeline with qualified talent. So that's all from my side. Now, uh, there is another uh, few interesting statistics I would like to share. Uh, so before you just uh, you know share the next slider as well, I guess uh, uh, a couple of participants have requested for the explanation of sixth point. Uh, looks like uh, it is extremely uh, you know, critical. Uh, from their perspective. So if you could just take that up, sir, for a minute, I'm extremely sorry to have mm -hmm. paused you there. Oh, five, six. Yeah. Source yeah. candidates for roles you don't have open yet. Yeah. So when we, uh, when I had taken up that talent uh, pipeline framework, I had spoken about that you should know long-term goals for your company. So when you are talking to the candidate and uh, he is not getting into the fitment criteria, what you are looking for, the current open mandate. But you know very well that he may be a good fit related to the company culture. And if the suitable position comes in the future, you may be able to hire. So what I mean to say, if the candidate is good enough, Though he is not fitting into your current criteria, you should be positive enough and <clears throat> keep it into your talent pipeline for the future rules, whenever it is coming up. I hope it clarifies. Uh, yes, sir. Sure. So thank you so much for uh, you know explaining us that uh, particular answer as well. And I'm sure that you know uh, participants are requested to just answer or you know ask questions if you have in detail if there is any so that we can take that on the chat box later in the Q and A session. So in the interest of time, we can definitely move forward to the next slide. So thank you. Yeah. So few interesting statistics which uh, I uh, would like that you should you all should keep in mind that 73% of candidates are passive, passive job seekers. <laughs> so they are not actively <coughs> on the searching jobs. So if you will post the job, <coughs> they will not apply. But they are certainly passive job seekers. So if you will call them, they may get interested. Something get interesting and they may apply for the job. So that is why in sourcing active search, the word active search is very simple, but it is very important. 66% <coughs> of millennials plan to seek 
employment within the next two years. Uh, this particular uh, point has been changed so fast after post COVID, COVID that even the uh, freshers passing out from the college only are looking for the job for let's say less than a year. <laughs> That's why our job is very critical when it comes to the hiring job. So we need to be very strategic when we are doing planning. Top candidates stay available for just 10 days before getting hired. So your hiring decision has to be faster. 52% of candidates claim competitive compensation packages are the most attractive element of a job. But obvious, it's not only about the company culture and all. The first important point, they will look at the compensation package. 48% of business say their top quality hires come from employee reference. So please don't uh, give discount to employee referrals. So run the employee scheme, employee referral schemes where, you know, uh, give them incentives. Your employee referral platform has to be automated. It should be, you know, very transparent to what is happening to whatever the referral they have given. And third, you may run the contests as well. So keep due weightage to employer referrals. Organizations that invest in employer branding are three times more likely to make a quality hire. So employer branding is that much important. It will increase, it will brighten your chances three times related to quality hiring. So, Noel, that's all from my side. I would like to take question answers, if any. Well, thank you so much, sir. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, we will definitely you know, look forward to the questions as well. Uh, so let me just go, uh, you know, around the house to check if there are any questions. Let me start off with, uh, you know, starting with the first question uh, in terms of also, uh, you know, hiring from limited sector example, you know, uh, VET as a sector is a challenge, very limited database is what, uh, you know, they have. So Monster does not, uh, you know, uh, you know, provide uh, that kind of, uh, you know, leverage as well. So uh, any particular uh, insight that you'd like to give on, let's say. Uh, VT is veterinary. What exactly is VT? Yeah. So uh, let me just uh, check if, uh, you know, uh, Anshu can, ch you know, share the question again. It will be amazing if, uh, you know, we can rephrase that question again. I'll... I'm sure that you can put it in the chat box. So, sir, the next question is, you know, won't the candidate get, uh, you know, irritated if, you know, three to four companies are going and tapping in uh, on that particular, uh, you know, interest as such? So, uh, any any thoughts on those uh, lines as well? Obviously, obviously, if he is, uh, you know, hopping between three three to four companies and, uh, uh, you know, uh, weighing where he has to join, the recruiter who is more connected, more engaged, will... Right have more chances to get that particular candidate on board. Apart from other things, obviously competitive, uh, uh, the compensation and all those things will play into picture. But the most important is the engagement, how you are taking. Your job doesn't stop at just the selection of the candidate. Till the time it's onboarded and it has undergone the training period, that, till that time, recruiter job uh, remains alive. So that is very important. Right. Absolutely, sir. And so what are the ways that we could, uh, you know, uh, employer, you know, can brand uh, for a smaller company or an organization? Any, any? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. It's a very interesting question. And nowadays, it's very easy to do that. In the earlier times when, you know, online uh, tech was not that popular and uh, the print media was very costly, right. you can't do uh, most things. So again, I am repeating the same things. Always respond to reviews. If any reviews are coming on any of the social platform, please check and immediately respond. So your company will look live. Then the uh, share the um, your employee stories so 
how well they are connected, how they are living the company culture, how you are promoting gender diversity, all those stories need to be shared in the social platforms. Then you can create your company blog. You participate more and more in conferences. Actively do partnering with your marketing team. There are ways related to uh, you know organic and paid advertising as well. So these are the few pointers which I would like to highlight here. There are more you know the entire employer branding is altogether a very uh, a different subject. Right. So, but but uh, from the hiring perspective, these pointers you can always help. All right, true, sir. And I totally agree about that organic aspect as well. So another question, you know, what are the important uh, you know, criteria for selecting the candidates for a startup organization? Startup organization. <clears throat> so this is also a very interesting the question. I would like to take that. So sure. startup organization, everything is changing rapidly. And when you hire a particular employee, if you hire from the perspective of what is the current situation of the company, let's say they are earning only, uh, let's say, a few crores. Few crore is the revenue. And you hire that, okay, this person would be able to handle this thing. But you never know that a startup, you know, they grow very rapidly. So you have to see a particular the culture adjustment of that particular employee for that particular candidate, how he is responding and how he can take up that uh, piece if the company expands. True. So the scalability, that particular skill you need to check when you are hiring for the startups. And obviously, uh, there are a few other points uh, related to learning, uh, you know, the, adapting to the new skills and more importantly, whether he is adjustable with the new environment and he should have multiple skills as well. Sometimes that is also important right. because, so you know, one person yeah. do multiple things. Yeah, yeah. No. True. So adjusting to the ecosystem is extremely important. And I did just go ahead and check that, you know, there were some participants of one of our participants who were not able to join. Uh, so I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, apologies for that. I guess there could be a technical glitch on that. I'm, I just uh, ran through that uh, question. So please uh, accept our apologies. And I'm sure that you know, uh, there could be a technical glitch uh, as well. Cool. So let's let's move on to the next question in terms of uh, looking at what are the strategies uh, you know that we use to make sure that candidate joins, especially in an IT sector. Yeah, IT sector, there is one important point which I had mentioned that uh, always, you know, uh, re-circle uh, your talent pool because in IT, everything is evolving very fast and a lot of technologies are, you know, being changed. So, in fact, to remain in the market, candidates are also upskilling their things. So, you need to be very active and don't ignore that, okay, this candidate we have rejected last time. So he may not be suitable this time. That is very important in IT. And IT people have challenges related to, you know, their their current sal their current compensation is so much. How can we give them the compensation? Don't look at that piece. Look at from your budgetary level whether this candidate is suitable, please hire him. Right. Don't get into that particular strategies. Ki, okay, we can give that much only. <laughs> so that is very important. Right. Otherwise, you will lose the candidate. True. So how to manage attrition? Any particular tips or you know something that's worked for as well in the past? Yes, yes. Very importantly, as I mentioned, that recruiters should not stop at the selections only. They have to engage after selection through email, sending newsletters, sending stories about the company, and they have to engage at every level. And in that particular, they have to sense, okay, candidate is still responding. 
that means all is well if candidate stops responding or you know uh, then then you have to immediately look for the backup so that is very important but engagement with the uh, you know one of the uh, uh, company i joined so uh, with my notice period of almost 3 months at the senior level they have engaged me they were uh, you know uh, they have couriered me a few good books to read and they continuously started sharing they had made me the uh, part of their group where their company information newsletters what even all events are happening in the company so they engaged me the in the entire that three month period so that is very important so you please do that don't stop at the selection you okay selection your job is done uh, that's not your job done till the time training is over and he is live on the floor your job is still on right uh, absolutely and i couldn't agree more and following up to that question most of the candidates ghost post accepting the offer letter and prior to joining off the firm so how can the profit uh, probability of them ghosting be reduced very valid point very valid point so you know when we are taking up uh, these things in terms of uh, uh, you know ghosting ghosting is the word which we are using nowadays right so basically uh there is no particular option but when you are offering him right uh you need to sense him when you are negotiating closing the composition compensation with him ne- do all due diligence with him whether he is you know uh weighing the options with other companies as well at that particular point of time or whether his company is uh, you know he is still considering that piece so you know you have to be very open about all things related to your company culture related to his job role you have to answer each and everything whether it is a small and weird thing so engaging with the candidates is very important again i am going to back to the same thing so that is very important till the time you are engaged uh, the candidate will not go right and uh, well i guess the questions are definitely pouring in so one uh, question is sometimes uh, we are definitely struggling in finding a perfect cv uh, for a banking and a finance sector so could you please advise on that okay <coughs> so banking and finance sector there are specific skill sets so when you are uh, finding uh, when you are looking for a particular cv for bfsi sector the first and foremost important thing you need to sit with the hiring manager there are simple uh, process steps if you will follow and keep in mind that will really help you so when you sit with hiring manager please note down all the keywords what is expected for the job role so that your search become easy run through sample cvs at the initial stage of hiring when you get the mandate to hire that time itself you run sample cvs with him and right. when he accept that okay this particular frame of cv is right. very suitable for us Mm-hmm. go and bang on with the actual and practical uh, cvs all right so uh, you know there's a question from the chat box as well in terms of you know uh, ctc given by the big companies uh, which is out of market standards right so a- any thoughts on that sir well first i don't agree with the uh, question because Uh, mm-hmm. big companies have their own set criteria and they even the hr people don't go beyond that but even that piece uh can be answered basically how good 
uh, you are selling your job role with mm-hmm. them and the company culture so that is the pitch uh, you can uh, give it to the candidate at based on the specific uh, skill sets you can compare it with them all right cool uh, and i'm sure that that was uh, you know to the point and is there any other way to identify if the candidate is actively looking out for an opportunity uh, or not apart from filtering the resume activation or modification date mm-hmm. yeah if can if the candidate is actively looking out for opportunity well, well uh, there are a lot of uh, you know ways nowadays mm-hmm. you can check uh, very easily their uh, social media activities what up, what are their interests what are they up to so those activities i have seen from my experiences and from my uh, observations that you get a sense whether he is looking for even after accepting your offer so that's very important that you watch for their social media activities as well apart from what is happening in his uh, normal life when he is engaging with you right and how do you uh, you know uh, you know want to answer this as well so in terms of how to maintain the transparency uh, between the client and the candidates well it is very important to maintain the transparency so to maintain the transparency as i mentioned uh, email activity is still not out <coughs> sorry from the fashion so basically uh when you are writing a mail about that particular uh, job opening you explain him how you think they could contribute to the team or what exactly the role summary role defines so that will give him a clarity and at the time of the interview you can cross check with once again whether he has understood what exactly is the role demands and conf- have taken once the confirmation has been taken that will be very clear and he will also be confident to join your company because if you don't give the transparency the candidate will not be confident and he can be of you know in two minds whether to join or whether to you know refrain right absolutely and uh, you know adding on to that would the candidate stay longer uh, in the organization you know if he agrees to get higher on uh, ctc lower than his current ctc okay uh, you mean to see he is uh, agreeing for the lower ctc yes okay so sometimes it happens ki uh, you know uh, that's a very wise saying that uh, employee doesn't leave just because of the company employee leaves the company just because of their bosses so i think uh, uh, that's a valid answer and you can find while cross questioning and interviewing with the candidate ki why he is leaving the company so when you understand sometimes you know uh, staying longer in the company a uh, company doesn't value a uh, few of the companies i am not saying the all companies but few of the companies uh, uh, or the uh, basically employee feels that since he is a longer in uh, is long time long term into the system so his he the company is not valuing him. company is taking him otherwise so that's the point uh, right. you can check and there might be possibility and i know a lot of cases even mm-hmm. uh, i have hired people because uh, they have accepted the higher ctc and the role they have not found that suitable as per their skill sets right. so now they move into what interests them what suits them so they accept uh, a lower ctc as well All right sure and uh, thank you so much for answering that sir we have another question in terms of you know are there any effective tools to maintain the talent pool and talent pipeline obviously there are a lot of uh, uh, 
you know, uh, tools available in the market, uh, uh, it would not be appropriate at this form forum to tell. But uh, you know, uh, now uh, now most of the companies which are <coughs> into the market in this particular uh, segment, they have developed a lot of things. AI is also in the place, and a lot of uh, companies have their in-house system, and they are you know developing a lot of things and changing and adapting as per the new things. As I, I, as I was mentioning about the volumetric hiring, so it's all together a different ball game and where the technology plays a very good role. So uh, look for the tool which is customizable as per your needs. That is very important and very user friendly. And in fact, if you offer the candidate also the access to that, that also become very user friendly. Right. So user friendly, yes, definitely. And we have another question where candidates don't want to come to Chhattisgarh. This is a very unique question. And hence location has been the biggest challenge for us. So how do we yes. overcome that situation? Nurture the local talent. That is the long-term strategy, which uh, I have uh, mentioned when I was mentioning about that BPO hiring piece. Nurture the local talent. Look for the candidates who are born and brought up from Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is developing like anything. So, uh, in fact, I know very well about that piece. So, a lot of industrial pieces are there. And uh, at the same time, uh, the local development uh, from the government opinion may not be that uh, matching that particular standard. So, I understand this challenge. Uh, but nurture the local talent, look for the people who have gone outside and they belong and they wanted to come. All right. So, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, sorry for uh, the interruption, sir, but, uh, you know, I guess, you know, the questions are not stopping at all. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to also check with you, you know, what would be the best sourcing strategy and also how to build a pipeline for niche uh, skill set profiles? Yeah. So this basically, uh, you know, you have to be on a lot of forums. You need to attend, you know, events and conferences in whatever uh, field uh, your company is there and meet one-to-one -one the, these people. All right. And the better connect you have, more likely a better personal connect you have, more likely they are going to respond to you. And niche skill set profiles, uh, you need to connect with the social uh, connect. And the best way when you are talking about employer referrals here, so uh, the, the employees with these kind of uh, quality already you have in the company, right. uh, go to their connects and get them onboarded, get them interested. Well, absolutely. And uh, well, I uh, definitely think that, you know, the questions aren't stopping at all. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, in the interest of time, I understand that we are all on a crunch of a tight schedule. But it was absolutely, uh, you know, amazing to have you here, sir. Well, I would love to answer all questions. <laughs> so <laughs> better you mail me. Absolutely, I'll try sir. to uh, give one to one. Absolutely. Very grateful for you. And I guess a lot of people have a lot of questions and that definitely made the session a lot more uh, engaging. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I truly, truly appreciate that. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure having your brilliance here. Uh, same here, same here. Expertise as well. Very good to connect uh, such a global uh, community. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And, this uh, and, to and share and also, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Truly, truly appreciate that. I also request the participants to uh, kindly excuse us. We will definitely, you know, get back to uh, you guys with, uh, you know, the questions as well. Uh, some people also wanted to look at the, uh, you know, chat box and also uh, wanted the video sessions too. So that will all uh, be communicated to you uh, as well. But before we, you know, wrap up the session and again, meet you guys in episode 12, uh, we look forward to your feedback because your opinion matters. And I'm sure that you will uh, take the survey and feedback so that we can serve you better and meet you again the next time. 
So I guess this is Noel signing off. Thank you so much for being a brilliant, brilliant audience. Look forward to see you guys in another action pack session. Thank you so much again. Take care of yourself and have a brilliant week ahead. Thank you so much.